them on their uh, what they thought was life and what was supposed to be happening in their life. And so, you know, when we're in the world, we have a certain set of, of things that we think are normal and proper. When we get born again, we find out those things are not normal and proper to God. It might have been normal and proper to our family, but they're not normal and proper to God. And so uh, we have to change a few things. If we don't want to hear that, then we'll shut it out and we won't listen to it. It's just very simple. He says, you, he's talking to them now, you are of your father, the, the devil, and it is your will to practice the lusts and gratify the desires which are characteristic of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks of falsehood, he speaks what is natural to him. For he's a liar himself and the father of lies and all that is false. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me, do not trust me, do not rely on me, or adhere to me. Now, this thing, when we consider the works of the enemy, he's a murderer. Well, the scripture says he came to steal, to kill, and to destroy, right? Well, this says he was a murderer from the beginning, and there is no truth in him. And usually, when we come out of the world, at least in my life, when I came out of the world, I was a liar. Uh, we had different classes of lies at our house. I don't know about you, but we had, we had lies that were okay because they kept from hurting people's feelings, right? Then we had other lies that we told that they were kind of marginal, but then there was really bad lies that you told. And so... It was kind of confusing to know which one went in what category, you know? It's like when you call up to school and you say, I'm sick today, I'm not going to be there. Or you call up and say, my daughter's sick, I'm not coming, or she's not coming, right? I can't even get it right now. <laughs> Did you ever call in for yourself and say you were sick? Like you were the parent? You know, people do that. But So, I mean, there's, there's just different kind of lies. But all lies come from the enemy. All deception comes from the enemy. And the challenge that we have with our thinking is that we believed a lie throughout our whole lives. And as we believe that lie, it changes the way we focus on things. We figure we can't be one way because we don't have this. Or we can't be that way because we don't look like this. Or we don't act like this. Or we don't have money. Or you know, all of these things are lies in our life. Because God says he's no respecter of persons. He doesn't love me any more than he loves you. And he doesn't love us any more than he loves the sinner. Now that's sobering to me. I mean, you think we're God's kids now, right? We're born again. He should surely love us more, right? But it says God, when we were yet his enemies, he gave Jesus to die for us. So God's love, he loves his creation. He loves mankind. When we're born again, we come into the flow of love because we come into the life of God. And so we're partaking of that love is there. It's like you're having a, a huge pool of liquid love. And when you get born again, they let you through the fence. And there you are. You have access to all of it. But the other people who haven't received Christ and don't know God, they're on the outside of the fence. They can't get any of it. So it's, a, it's kind of a, a key thing that uh, we have to believe that God loves us. We know that he loved, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that we should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay, so some are, are born again, some are not. That doesn't mean that the um, are nots are not loved by God. All they have to do is repent, receive Christ, and they will walk into the pond of love, right? So it, it's something that we think about. Now the devil would come along and say, well, God doesn't love them, and he doesn't love you because you did this this morning. Look at you lost your temper. Something's wrong with you. It's the enemy. The enemy comes in to accuse us. And in our lives, as we grew up, we were always, like, judged for being good or being bad. And a lot of times people didn't tell us what was good and what was bad, right? I mean, 
And we were supposed to make everybody happy by doing certain things, but we didn't always know what the certain things were that we were supposed to do. So it was kind of frustrating. Well, God gives us a whole book here of how we can enter in, and we know what he expects. We know what he, we get when we get born again. We get all of these abilities in our life to resist sin, to resist the devil, to not live like we did before. But we got to recognize all lies are from the devil. We should always tell the truth. All lies are from the devil. And you know when we really, as, as born again Christians, when we're tempted to lie is when we're going to get in trouble or we feel like we're going to get in trouble, right? So we like try and protect ourselves with a lie. Well, there's lots of ways to tell the truth that are not antagonistic. Like if they um, say um, I were to go and try on a new dress and ask my husband, do you like this dress? That's a loaded question, isn't it? How do you think this dress looks on me? What's he going to say? Looks terrible. Makes you look fat. Makes you look sloppy. <laughs> you know, why are you See, he tells me the truth, right? I don't want to hear that kind of truth. But there's a way you can tell me the truth that's nicer. Like perhaps he might say, well, I really think another color would be better. Or that doesn't really accentuate your eyes as beautiful as they are. You see the difference? So he's actually saying, the dress isn't really good on you, you know, but he's not going to tell me what, how bad it really looks, right? And so we have to learn in our lives that we can tell the truth, but we can tell the truth kindly. We just don't have to be out there. Well, the devil has never learned to tell the truth. There's no truth in him. There's no truth in him. That's why he's so different from the Lord, because the Lord always says the truth. He always says the truth. So we can know the works of the enemy. How? Because... He lies. He kills. He steals. He destroys things. And then we also know by the scripture that authority is given from God. Authority comes from God. Do you remember I said that the one who is there first is the one who has the most authority or has the authority in the place? All right. So, I mean, who is first in all of creation? outside of creation. Actually, God was outside of creation, wasn't he? Because he made it. So God was, is, and will be, and he, so he was first. So he has all authority. So when we're not born again, we have no idea God has any authority. We, you know, we rebel. We rebel against God. We rebel against our parents. We rebel against all kinds of things. But we don't recognize that all authority comes from God. And if we want to have authority, then the closer we get to God, the more authority that we have. And that the devil is the father of those who lie and murder and steal. So they've not been born again. Then we have to ask ourselves, are we born again or are we just churched? This would surprise you because your hearts are so pure again to God because you're new in the Lord. But there's some people that come to church and they just, they're churched. They're not born again. They're just used to going to church. I'm sorry to tell you this. And they don't always act real nice. They're not always nice people. And, um, they, but they sit there and they think they're okay because they've never repented and received Christ and had a life change. So we recognize that you've got to be born again. And I don't have any problem in church asking people in church, are you born again? How do I know unless I ask, right? If I don't, just because they're sitting in the seat doesn't mean that they're born again. You never know who comes in, especially here, you never know who comes in. At our church, the other church, you still don't know if they're born again.